What's happening guys, I'm TechStories. Welcome to Setup Wars episode 156, where you submit your desk setup to get featured on the channel. If you guys wanna participate, you know what to do. Make sure to watch the video linked down below. Now, if you guys are gonna be submitting photos, please, please do your best to send in high quality pictures. So make sure there is a bunch of light in the room. Um, you can have a crappy setup, but still get featured as long as the picture quality is awesome. So that is what I'm looking for in these submissions. But anyways, with that said, let the Setup Wars begin. Hey guys, so right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key for less than 15 freaking dollars. But if you guys use the code TS20, you can get an extra 20% off from yourcdkeys.com. So check the link below if you're interested. This is crazy. Kicking off the episode is Colin from Colorado and his ridiculous wooden themed setup that he uses for pretty much everything from gaming, entertainment, and design. Like I keep saying in previous episodes, wood is not my cup of tea, but Colin over here makes it look real good and I officially got wood from this pick. And you know what, I just noticed his plaque on top of his PC. That right there is my official Setup Wars seal of approval plaque that I give to people with a perfect setup. Okay, so this guy was from episode 56 back in June 2016 and god damn, his setup has changed by a lot since then. I also noticed he had wood back then as well, if you know what I mean. So the moderate choices are interesting here, and I like that he went with a single ultra wide in the center, which is sandwiched by two 22 inch ViewSonic monitors. There's no reason why anyone should put two, let alone three ultra wides side by side, other than to flex and show off. Let's be realistic here, your eyes can't see that wide, so why on earth would you put two or even three ultra wides side by side? You literally have to like lean in to see what's going on in the corner of the monitors. I mean, to be fair, even Colin's monitor setup is a bit wide for me, but if it works for him, then so be it. On top of the triple displays is a massive 50 inch 4K TV as an overhead, and all that is mounted against the wall with a couple of raceways to hide the wires going down and behind his setup. On the desk, he's still using the Corsair Strafe RGB keyboard from before, but he did replace his MX Master Mouse for a Logitech G502. I also like that he drilled a hole in the desk for both wires and speaking of the desk, it's custom made from beetle kilpine wood and resin, which is what that blue translucent material is going across the surface. You can actually look up resin tabletops, they look pretty cool. Some of the stuff he has on the desk are his crystal pokeball of Alakazam and a few Xbox One controllers with dbrand skins. He did a really great job keeping the surface clean and minimalistic. I also noticed that he kept the same microphone as before, but this time he mounted it on a boom arm next to his bookshelf speakers. The only other audio source he has are the ATH M50Xs, which are hanging from the side of the desk. And this is also where he keeps his Xbox One console neatly tucked away underneath his desk. While we're down here, let's take a look at the cable management. Uh, looks like he did a great job keeping the wires hidden behind the backboard. And I just realized what those pipes are used for actually. I thought the monitors and TV were mounted against the wall, but it actually turns out it's mounted on a giant piece of wood that's being supported by the metal pipes. That's interesting. That is actually a really smart way of not damaging or poking holes into your wall. So kudos to you, good sir. Finally, let's take a look at the PC that has been upgraded the most since his last time on the show. Real quickly, this is what his PC looked like over two years ago. It's nice to see some up-to-date specs like the 6700K, 16 gigs of RAM, and the ASUS Strix 1070, nicely done. I also like the custom woodwork on the front panel of the PC and the drawers. Once again, it's not my cup of tea, but uh, since the desk is so huge, it does blend perfectly with it and keeps the theme consistent throughout the setup. Excellent attention to detail and organization. You have taken a great setup and made it even better. Thank you, Colin, for entering, and congrats on that nice upgrade. Next up is a fellow Armenian from LA. His name is Hovo. I'm surprised you didn't mention anything in the notes about being Armenian because I don't know if you know this, but it's yes, salam, hi. So this is the setup he uses for gaming and watching movies. He's rocking the 34 inch ultra wide gaming monitor from Asus and the Corsair K95 Platinum keyboard with the wireless Razer Mamba mouse. I like what he did with his speakers. It's actually very clever. They're sitting on wall shelves and because the wall is covered in acoustic foams, he's able to route the wires behind them for a cleaner look. Now one thing I would have done differently was maybe use some red acoustic foams to give off some nice contrast between the black foams, especially since there are some red accents across the setup and inside the PC. 
Or option number two would have been to paint the IKEA shelves in red, which would have made them pop more since the speakers and the foams are both in black, but that's just my taste. I do like where he keeps his headphones. He has them hanging from the left side of the desk when he's not using them, and that's also where he charges them along with the switch. Very nice. I'm going to feel really dumb if you don't speak Armenian. I'm just talking to myself in Armenian. But yeah, if you understood what I said, <laughs> let me know in the comment section. So the TV up top isn't exactly centered with the setup and he offered an explanation in the notes stating that the studs on the wall prevented him from centering it, which I can understand. The cable management is very clean. I love that he took advantage of the acoustic foams and basically routed most of the wires behind it and out from the bottom behind the drawer with the help of a channel raceway. Nicely done. The massive PC on the desk is packing some nice specs as well. It's got the 7700K, 32 gigs of RAM and the Strix 1080 Ti. 32 gigs of RAM is definitely overkill just for gaming and watching movies, which leads me to believe that you picked up 32 gigs just to fill all four slots of the motherboard. I'm not gonna give you any hate because this literally sounds like something I would do. <laughs> I also love how clean the build is. Custom cable sleeves and the AIO sleeving kit from Cable Mod is definitely a nice addition. I just would have loved to see more red across your setup. Now it doesn't have to be over the top, but some red accents would be really nice. There are some nice mouse pads on Amazon with red stitching, which would look really nice. And even some skins on the Xbox would spice things up and really bring together your entire setup. I think that you have a solid foundation here, but I feel like with some minor tweaks, you can definitely improve the aesthetic of your setup. Thank you, Hobo, for entering. Coming in at number three is John from Canada and this awesome DC inspired set. Actually, never mind about that. We got a Captain America shield and the Spider-Man right in the center. So actually now that I'm looking at it, it looks like DC is on the left and we got Marvel on the right. But anyways, back to the setup. He's rocking an ultrawide from LG that's mounted on the wall and below that is the Razer Ornata Chroma keyboard and the Logitech G502 Proteus mouse. I like the cable management, but I have concerns about the cable slack of that mouse. Is it me or does it look like there's just not enough slack there? So fun fact about John, he actually used to be a hardcore console peasant uh, before watching my channel. Till today, he actually has over 300 games across, I think, four consoles. He said, I couldn't be more proud that you are now part of the PC Master Race. Welcome. I do have to give points to John for his amazing coordination. Oh, just look at the symmetry. It is on point from the centered wall shelf up top to both the Zelda swords and even the shelves holding up the collectibles. Well done, good sir. For audio, he's rocking a pair of Logitech speakers, which he ended up painting to match the color scheme. And he's also got a Sadie's gaming headset hanging from the side of the desk. I love what he did with the wire management. So he used a bracket that he picked up from Home Depot to wrap the cables around. That's actually very clever. All the collectibles around the setup are nice and it definitely adds personality, don't get me wrong, but I much prefer things that are unique and cannot be bought or replicated. For example, the art that your wife painted. The Joker, we got Kratos from God of War, and that badass Venom vs. Spider-Man paintings add way more personality than any figurine or collectible because it's unique and it also has sentimental value. Cables are hidden behind the desk very well with the help of some channel raceways covering the monitor wires and also looks like we have a cable sleeve wrapping up the wires behind the PC. It's not the best looking rig out there, which makes sense why it's on the ground, but it does pack some serious juice. We got the 4790 non-K version, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, and the 1080 Founders Edition, which is plenty for 1080p gaming. A very impressive setup with lots of personality and the symmetry uh, just gives me more wood than the first setup featured on this episode. Thank you, John, for entering. And number four is Rob from Montreal and his man cave. So he's got a TV setup for console gaming and watching videos, while the other setup on the right is used for gaming, taking coding courses, and the occasional fab session. Why do people keep writing that in the notes? So he's rocking three monitors. All of them are different models. So my OCD just kicked in, that's great. Uh, the desk itself is pretty straightforward. We got the Linman tabletop with an Alex Jor as support. I do advise against the Linman tabletop because it's not really built well, especially for a triple monitor setup, and you'll start to see bowing in the center, just like Rob's setup. I always urge people who are going with a multi-monitor setup to avoid Linman tabletops for this very reason. They are not built well, guys. There's a reason why it's this cheap. 
I recommend shopping in the kitchen countertop section of IKEA if you must buy a tabletop separately. These are built much better and can support more weight. For peripherals, we got another Ornata Chroma keyboard from Razer paired with the Mamba. However, this time he has an extra mouse, which I'm guessing is used for a specific type of games, probably MMO if I'm not mistaken. So I love the hole that was modded in the desk for the wires, and this is actually interesting. He used another mouse pad, which sits underneath the soundbar and provides padding for his other tech. But it also covers the wire from the keyboard, kind of like a multi-purpose mouse pad. Other than the soundbar, he does have a Razer Kraken headset hanging from underneath the desk, and I just noticed his collection of World of Warcraft. I don't know if he's still playing, but I started playing uh, at the end of BC and I quit one week into Cataclysm. I, that game literally sucked three years of my life away. But you know what? It was fun. Cable management is interesting. So we have a power strip that's mounted on the wall instead of underneath the desk for some reason. Maybe because of the weight, but either way, it's a pretty clean job down here. I also like how we use cable clips to route and keep the wires from hanging down. Good work. Now the PC is using is a pre-built, but I do agree behind his reasoning. Back then GPU prices was ridiculous because of cryptocurrency and believe it or not, it was way cheaper buying a pre-built instead of building your own because of that. So the TV setup on the other side is pretty sick. He's literally got a gaming chair. This thing is hooked up to a ProFlight X56 system, plus he's got his PS4 console. The only thing I would recommend later down the line if you do end up changing your monitors is getting a different tabletop, something that's more sturdy. But other than that, I'm definitely digging this man cave. I think you did a great job putting everything together. Thank you, Rob, for entering. Wrapping up the episode is Skylar with this very clean and ultra-wide gaming setup. So he's rocking the X34 from Acer that's hooked up to the wall, and below that we got the PS4 and some Corsair gear, the K70 RGB keyboard and the Harpoon RGB mouse. I feel like if I were ever to get a wood tabletop for my setup, it has to have a glossy finish like this one. I feel like it looks way better than the original. For audio, he's using the Razer Kraken Pro V2 headset, which appears to not have a dedicated place, but he does have Logitech speakers as well. Nothing fancy when it comes to cable management. We got the basic cookie cutter setup with the power strip underneath the desk and some cable clips holding up the wires. The PC is probably the coolest part of this setup. It looks pretty damn amazing with the white and black color scheme. I like the white custom cables and the MSI 1080 Ti Trio, but what's up with the RGB lighting from the RAM sticks? I noticed the RGB lighting from the keyboard and mouse as well. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I'm just curious why the PC and some parts of the setup have specific colors, but the lighting is left on the default RGB color cycle. Regardless, it's a dope setup, pretty straightforward, nothing I can really recommend here to improve. Thank you, Skylar, for entering. So that's it for this episode of Setup Wars. As always, make sure you guys drop your comments below and vote on who you think has the best desk setup. This is actually a tough episode. We've got a bunch of awesome setups. I'll announce the winners on my Twitter and InstaFail accounts. Make sure you guys are following there if you are interested at all. If you guys enjoy Setup Wars, toss a like to show your support as always. If you guys hate the episode, please drop a dislike. I will not be upset. As always, I love your faces and I will see you in the next one.